coronavirus and severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. What is coronavirus? Coronavirus refers to a family of viruses that cause respiratory illnesses. Human coronaviruses were initially described during the mid-1960s and were named for their crown-like shape when viewed under the microscope. Same as in any extended family, each member of Coronaviridae is unique, but there are similarities that make them all related. The most notable family traits are the crown-like spikes on their surface and the way they carry genetic material in the form of RNA protected by both a corkscrew-shaped protein shell and an outer envelope layer. Coronaviruses cause infections that range in severity from a common everyday cold to potentially deadly respiratory syndromes. Since 2003, three members of the coronavirus family have become famous because of the worldwide infections they have caused. These three most well-known coronaviruses are SARS, MERS, and most recently, the 2019 novel coronavirus. All three can cause severe respiratory illnesses and will be reviewed here. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, SARS. Starting in 2002, a coronavirus family member caused an outbreak called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, best known by its abbreviation, SARS. SARS is a flu-like viral respiratory illness that has an alarming fatality rate of 9.6%. The virus that causes SARS was later identified and named SARS-CoV-1. At the time of the epidemic, there were over 8,000 confirmed cases in 26 countries. There have not been any new cases of SARS since 2004. Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS. The Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS for short, was first seen in Saudi Arabia in 2012. Similar to SARS, MERS also causes severe respiratory disease, which led to a global health crisis with 2,494 cases worldwide. MERS is associated with a frightening 35% fatality rate. Although dormant for several years, as recently as 2019, there have been three documented cases. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, COVID-19. At the end of 2019, a new coronavirus infected its first victim in the Hubei province of China. This novel virus has been officially named SARS-CoV-2. This virus is responsible for the current pandemic and is most commonly referred to as COVID-19. As its technical name suggests, the virus that causes COVID is structurally similar to the coronavirus that caused the SARS epidemic. It appears that COVID is more contagious than SARS, but is also less deadly, with a fatality rate estimated at 1 to 3 percent. Where did COVID-19 come from? Many of the first people to contract COVID frequented a live animal and wholesale seafood market in Wuhan, China. COVID is a zoonotic virus, meaning it initially spread from animal to person, something medical professionals refer to as a spillover event. It is thought that the natural reservoir host for COVID is bats, but the intermediate animal between bats and humans is currently understudied. How does COVID-19 spread? While this virus initially spread from animal to person, it is now transmitted from person to person. When an infected person talks, coughs, or sneezes, they can release as many as 100,000 respiratory droplets. These droplets can contain high amounts of the virus. The smaller droplets can remain in the air for long periods of time, and experts agree that this makes COVID at least partially airborne. It is thought that those infected with COVID become contagious shortly after getting infected, even if they do not have any measurable symptoms. The risk of spreading COVID is highest when people are within six feet of an infected individual as this is, on average, how far the larger droplets can be propelled. These larger droplets tend to carry a heavier load of the virus than smaller ones. Completely asymptomatic people are able to spread the virus just as easily as severely ill patients. The latest data suggests that about 30 to 40 percent of people fully infected with COVID have no noticeable or measurable symptoms at all. 
these individuals represent the most difficult challenge for controlling the pandemic, as they cannot be screened out of the community. Although it is not thought to be the main mode of transmission, it is possible to get coronavirus by touching a surface or object that has the droplet containing the virus on it, and then touching your mouth, eyes, or nose. Inanimate objects that harbor the virus are called fomites. What symptoms does infection with SARS-CoV-2 cause? Symptoms can range from no symptoms at all to severe lung infections. For those who do experience symptoms, the most common ones to watch for are a fever of at least 100.4 Fahrenheit or 38 Celsius, dry cough, loss of taste or smell, fatigue, diarrhea, shortness of breath, Symptoms appear on average five to six days after exposure, but they can occur from as early as two days to as late as 14. Even people carrying the virus with no obvious symptoms might still have a measurable low-grade fever, and this is an important screening tool used by health professionals. Is COVID-19 serious? 80% of the people who show symptoms develop a mild flu-like illness and can be observed at home. 14% of infected patients will go on to develop severe complications from the virus, most commonly pneumonia. Approximately 6% become critically ill. The initial COVID fatality rate reported in China was as high as 3%, but this number appears to vary across countries and time. How to prevent COVID-19? Social isolation measures appear to be the most effective way to prevent the spread of this coronavirus. Maintaining a six-foot distance from other individuals when out in the community and avoiding crowded spaces, as well as non-critical travel, are of utmost importance. The CDC also urges the use of a face covering in public settings, particularly when social distancing techniques are hard to maintain, such as in places like gas stations, grocery stores, and pharmacies. Face masks have become an important tool for preventing the spread of the virus and controlling the COVID pandemic across the world. Face masks reduce the concentration of virus an infected person puts out into the environment, making it less likely for other people to become infected. Face masks also can decrease the concentration of a virus an uninfected person is exposed to. Exposure to a lower concentration of the virus may lead to a milder form of the disease. Widespread testing for COVID in both symptomatic and asymptomatic individuals is of supreme importance when attempting to control the spread of the virus, especially in light of the fact that asymptomatic people can spread the virus at the same level as ones who are sick. Frequent hand washing, especially after blowing one's nose, coughing or sneezing, going to the bathroom and before preparing and eating food can also reduce risk. Hand washing with soap and water can disrupt the envelope that surrounds and protects the coronavirus family, break its bond to the skin, and wash it away. The CDC recommends wetting the hands, applying soap, lathering the entire hand, including under the nails, and then scrubbing for at least 20 seconds before rinsing and drying them. If soap and water are not available, then alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol can be used. Remember to rub the gel all over the surfaces of the hands and fingers until they are dry.